Um, well, good morning, everyone, um, and thank you for coming. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I've never, we've never been involved in these forums before, so it's really exciting for us to be here. Um, my name is Renee. I work for a company called Envirocom Australia, who council contracts uh, to deliver their waste education program. So we work a lot with schools, kindies, and community groups. We run um, waste minimization programs with early learning centres and schools, and work with uh, community groups and industries to get across waste. And I know it can be very confusing. Today we're going to be focusing on recycling. We also focus on um, litter reduction, waste management plans, um, composting and worm farming. So if you're, if any of the groups and clubs that you represent today are interested, we can always come out and do presentations um, on any of those topics and work with your organisation to get across your waste management. Um, oh, there, that's what we're doing today. Um, before I get into it, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, so just a quick snapshot of what we're dealing with here in Queensland. So there's a lot of stats on the board, but what is most interesting is are these two numbers. So out of the 11 million tonnes of waste that we dispose of in a year, 55% of that in Queensland on average is sent to landfill. So over half of it. And that's the number that we really want to focus on and we want to reduce. So we want to send less stuff to landfill and we want to recycle or recover more. So there's a little difference between recycling and recovering. So recycling is using your yellow littered wheelie bin or a bulk bin, um, whether it's yellow for co-mingled recycling, so all of this, or blue for cardboard only. Um, that's how we recycle, but recovery is a little bit different where we might take things to other places. So as you're talking about the brass recycling, met scrap metal, um, things like batteries, taking them to different places. Um, our waste management facilities have resource recovery areas. We can take a range of different things, mattresses, gas cylinders, fridges, um, all these different things to keep it out of landfill. So council has, yes? Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, everyone. Thanks. I thank you for asking. Um, thanks. Um, yeah, so council has facilities where you can take items to be recovered, um, but there's also commercial businesses like you're talking about the scrap metal that you are taking to that recycler. So that's just the difference between recycling and recovery. Um, I should also say this is from 2017 and 18. We're patiently, impatiently waiting for new state government um, data. So then we can also like match theirs because we use a comparison with theirs. Um, but in Queensland, then 45% of our waste is recycled, recycled or recovered. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, this isn't working. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so in Moreton Bay region, so this is the same reporting period to keep it consistent. Um, we produce around 460,000 tonnes of waste with 56 of that being recycled or recovered. So it's about 10% more, which is great. We want to up that number and decrease our number um, for the proportion of waste being sent to landfill. Um, and 34,000 tonnes of that is recycled, at, is processed at the MRF. So that's the Materials Recovery Facility. Uh, which is down in Murray Ree. So Moreton Bay, Brisbane, Redlands, most of the recycling from our recycling trucks ends up at that facility where it's all sorted into our five different material groups. Because we obviously put a lot of different things in our recycling bin, we need to sort it out so that things can be sent to manufacturers to be turned into new things. Um, yes. So I'll just go through this quickly. Um, before we get into the actual rules of recycling because recycling is actually represented by this yellow one and it's not the best thing that we can do when it comes to waste management. Does anyone want to have a guess at what might be the best thing that we can do when it comes to managing waste? Recycling, it's one of them but it's not the top. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So the first one is avoiding making waste in the first place. So if we can avoid packaging, if we can avoid buying things that we don't need, that's the best thing we can do because once we've avoided it, problem solved. But obviously that's much easier said than done. We can't avoid everything. So the next best thing we can do is reduce. So an example of this might be 
um, buying things in bulk at your sports club, whether it's tomato sauce or cleaning products or anything, um, buying things in bulk and then using reusable containers. Like this is a single use product, but it can be a reusable product. Um, so buying, for example, the tomato sauce big bulk and refilling this. So you're still making waste, which is the bulk bottle, but you're making less waste because you're not, say, six of these. So that's the concept of reducing waste. Um, and or does anyone want to share how your club or group might be reducing waste in that way? Um, whether you buy things in bulk. I know some, because uh, we work with early learning centres a lot, they buy cleaning products in bulk and then use their, or well, the next one, um, reusing. So they use their big bulk containers for different things, um, soiled clothes or wet play, like keeping things um, in the, the centre. Also, you actually, I'll cover this in a minute anyway. Yeah, great. Yeah, okay, cool. And on that note with the Yeah, sure. And on that note with the cleaning, um, I went to a center recently. Um, they were using oxidized water. So it's no chemicals at all and it's just it's like I don't really exactly know how it works, but it's um antibacterial, it's super they're like innovative. I really like to see when um, centers or clubs are just kind of charging forward. Um, they've heard of it, they've tried it, it works, now it's been endorsed, but I think that was a good start. So like a big chain of early learning centres, so now they're doing that, which is really nice to see. Then we've got recycling. So we sometimes think of recycling as being the best thing that we can do, but if you can avoid it, if you can reduce and reuse, and then maybe then recycle. Um, so the concept of reusing as well, like glass jars, for example, um, for storage for different things, I'm a jar, glass jar queen. Um, and then at the end of its life, or you don't need it anymore, then it can be recycled. Because recycling takes a lot of energy, resources, um, money. So if we can do the things above, um, that assists with the cost of everything. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is dispose of things to landfill. So this is when there's no alternative. You might have already uh, reduced and reused. Um, the item may not be recyclable, like you, know, you wouldn't have reduced and reused. Oh, I can reuse this. Um, but this can't be recycled, so then it eventually needs to go to landfill. Um, but this is one where we can very easily avoid. Same with, if this was a water bottle, for example. Um, reusable products, coffee cups, um, water bottles, cutlery, straws. We'll get to the straw conversation later about having bulk um, single-use plastics left over after the ban has been introduced. Um, but yeah, also if you go to a cafe and they say due to state regulation we're not accepting reusables, that is no longer current. There was advice last year that reusable coffee cups were not accepted, but um, it's business. Um, it's up to the businesses to make that decision now. So I kindly tell people when they don't have that information right because I love and if they don't accept my coffee cup I'll say thanks I'll go somewhere else like that's just I'm stubborn um, but yeah so this is the waste hierarchy this is what we want um, center schools community groups to be thinking about when it comes to your waste um, how you might be able to avoid waste in the first place how you can reduce reuse and then we recycle and dispose after we've done the other things so when it comes to avoiding um, single-use items like this are the big ones. Um, cutlery and straws might be big for recreational sports clubs. Any other items that are hard to or single use items that are very prevalent that we might be able to think of alternatives for? I was just asking if there's any single use items that are very prevalent in clubs or community. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Another thing that we can do um, with coffee cups, and I, it could be a safety issue when it's hot, hot, um, but if you don't have a reusable cup, for example, um, you just ask for your coffee without a lid. So it's just one less piece of plastic. So especially if you're just going to sit, you're not, not driving with it. Um, so that might be an option, even as simple as having, I mean, it might be a COVID thing now anyway, but for you to ask, do you want a lid? 
because some people might not. So it would be saving your costs by not going through 100 lids in a day, you might go through 30 instead. So even that simple thing, and with the straw, would you like a straw instead of having them just like automatically put in? Um, so things like that might be able to save some plastic and save some costs as well. Um, so reduce, this is talking about reducing packaging. So for example, instead of having little squeezy tomato sauces, you might have a bottle. Again, with COVID, this might be interesting, um, but yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, really hard to avoid during a global pandemic, these little bits of plastic. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I guess this goes for the soy sauce as well. Um, coffee machines, if you can have a without the pods, all these different things. Um, so reusing, this is where we can get creative um, of if items can be reused again. So like this one, it was a single use item, but you can reuse it again. Um, so if you have packaging and um, yeah, packaging in your club. See if you can try to reuse it in another way. Suppliers will often take back packaging as well. So like say bulk containers from cleaning products or um, pellets, like storage, um, storage and shipping pellets, they may want to use it again, or you might be able to find other um, businesses or groups who want it. There's a, is anyone familiar with the program Aspire? So some of us, so there's a Aspire, A-S-P-I-R-E. Um, we, so Mountain Bay Regional Council has partnered with them recently and it's like a, it's a platform to facilitate a circular economy. So say business A has excess stock of something, business B wants that stock, it's like a matchmaking platform. So you list what you've got or what you want and it's matching businesses. The more businesses that are involved in that, the more um, or the better that's going to work because we need people to be giving stuff to get stuff and moving it around. That's why I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Um, and even just thinking creatively about what community groups may exist or businesses. I know early learning centers love excess paper and excess things to do craft and different things. Um, a center out at um, Scarborough, I think, has partnered with a, a paper like printing press. So all their scrap paper goes to the kindy and they love it. They've got all this paper that they can draw on. Um, so yeah, it's trying to think creatively and find people who might be able to use your waste or people who might have the stuff that you could, like something that you would value. Okay, recycling. Um, we're gonna jump into the rules of recycling. I've got our five different material groups, but just be mindful that there's stuff in here like this and this that isn't accepted in our recycling bins, but I'm just it's there as a conversation starter. So um, we'll start with the plastics because it's on this side of the table. Um, so the rules for plastics is that it needs to be a bottle or a container. So these would be considered containers. These are bottles. Um, with the bottles, we always have lids off for a number of reasons. Um, one, most of the time, unfortunately, the lids are a different type of plastic to the bottle. Um, so this is a number two, this is a number four. Doesn't matter, we can put all plastic numbers in. Um, but just not together because eventually when the plastics are sorted, um, they'll then be further processed and the number ones will go to someone, number twos will go to someone, number threes. Um, so we don't want to mix those plastics. Um, also, we need the bottles to be empty. If a lid is on, a little bit of liquid can stay in there. I unfortunately had an incident with chunky milk recently and it wasn't very nice. We don't want your milk, we want your bottles. Um, so yeah, lids off for that reason as well. And the last one is eventually um, the plastics will be um, put into a bale. So the, the big machines bale them up to be transported. If the lids are on, it doesn't really squeeze the air out. So we're gonna be transporting air, which we don't wanna do. So lids off, um, keeps the plastic numbers separated, keeps the bottles empty and enables them to be squished, to be transported. Yep. 
Yeah, so relatively clean and empty. Now, of, these are all spick and span because I touch them every day. Um, but for milk bottles, for example, just a little bit of water. It can be your washing up water after you've used it. Give it a quick shake, empty it, chuck it in. Um, I also take off this little blue ring. I'm very particular. Um, I very safely, with a knife, put it under. I also put a little snip in that ring because if that little ring escapes into the environment, it can be very harmful for animals getting trapped and entangled, etc. Um, so if you can remove things, please do. Um, if it looks like you're going to hurt yourself in the process, just leave it, leave it on, it'll be fine. Um, so all lids like this as well take off. Um, uh, so with that, um, they do not go into the recycling bin because of their size. So yes, these are made out of a uh, recycling num uh, plastic number four, doesn't matter what number it is, but because they're so small, they can't be processed. So at the MRF, I wonder if I've got a photo of what's coming up next. Um, at the MRF, the Materials Recovery Facility, um, the machines are huge. So there's a number of different machines. All of the materials moves along the conveyor belt and the machines are designed to pick out certain products. So the plastics, for example, um, goes through a series of different machines and little things like this just drop through the cracks, end up on the floor. All of that just gets swept up and goes to landfill. So unfortunately, if, unless you are giving them to an organisation that does collect them and process them, um, Ocean Crusaders is a local one, but they currently have a lot of stock of these and no, or not many people to buy that stock to actually use it. So they're doing great work, they do collect them, um, but they're currently looking for processors who are actually going to buy their stock or use their stock. We're going to add something. Yeah, because it's it's a bit of a niche market. Um, so like that Aspire program, if there's someone that wants the bottle caps, um, they could find someone like OSHA Crusaders to use it, but they need to have certain machinery technology to process it, chip it all up, melt it, process it, turn it into new things. There are businesses around who are doing that. Same with bread tags. There's businesses that use bread tags and different things. Um, Yet yeah, they make them into pot plants and bowls and different things. It's really cool. Um, yes. Yeah, so the source bulk foods is one um, biome stores. There's one in the city. I don't know. There's none in Morton Region. I asked them when I was in there last week. Um, but so there are places that can take our harder to recycle items, um, which we can't put in our wheelie bins. Um, so with the plastic yogurt, top, like any sort of tub container is fine. I don't have my perfect example of a yogurt tub, but you know the size of a single serve yogurt tub is a little bit smaller than this. That's about the smallest thing that we can put in our recycling bin. So if you can imagine the size of a single serve yogurt tub, if it's that size or bigger, it's fine. And it's a, if it's plastic, it's a bottle or a container, it's fine. If it's any smaller, just think. And it's hard to imagine the machinery, but yeah, it's small things just drop through the cracks and end up on the floor, which then they've got no chance. Um, any sort of polystyrene um, is not recyclable. These meat trays are kind of vintage now. Ours is very sad looking, um, but we're phasing away. Industry's kind of catching up to the demand of we don't want stuff that can't be recycled. We want to be able to recycle things. Um, so these uh, are no longer around. Oh, less around. This also has that what we call a recycling triangle with the number six in it. So it's telling us that it's a uh, plastic number six and that little recycling triangle is tricky. It's a kind of a liar. Um, if you see it, don't take it as truth that it can be recycled. Um, it's just telling us the plastic type. Um, so that can't be recycled. Same with this soft plastic. It's got our beautiful little triangle with a number four in it. It's telling us that it's a plastic number four. But because these are, we call them soft plastics, if they can scrunch, um, it's clearly not a bottle or a container. It cannot go in our wheelie bin, um, but they can be rescued through a program called Red Cycle, where Coles and Woolies are collection points. So on the back of here, it's got the little Red Cycle logo. Not all packaging does, um, but if it's a soft plastic, you can scrunch it into your hand. Um, it most likely is recyclable through or recoverable through the Red Cycle program. And um, there's also a new series of recycling labels. They're called the ARL or Australasian Recycling Label. Um, and this one has it. So it tells us that this bag is conditionally recyclable because it's got the recycle symbol, but the triangles are opaque or white. Um, and that's a conditionally recyclable. And it tells me 
store drop off. So this is saying it's recyclable if you take it to the store. This one here, for example, it has that the tub is recyclable and it's coloured in black or dark blue because it's just put in your recycle bin. Um, but it says foil. So the lid that was on the top, it says it's conditionally recyclable, scrunch it into a ball. So we'll get to that when we get to the aluminium. But if you see arl.org.au, um, that's the Australasian recycling label. This one also has a QR code to take you to the website, which is pretty cool. I actually love buying things when I've got that label on it. So it tells me exactly what I need to do with it. Any plastics questions before we move on to our next material group? If you think of anything, just let me know. I want to make sure that we're all confident when we walk away from here. Alrighty, so our next one is paper and cardboard. This one is, I think, the, probably the easiest one. As long as it's clean and empty paper and cardboard, it's all good to go. Like these and these and these, they're all clean. These ones are your 10 cent containers. If you do collect um, 10 cent containers, poppers are included, but please remove the little plastic sleeve and the straw. Same with the bottles with the lids. Um, so that one, if you're not collecting for 10 cents, you can put that into your recycling bin as well. And same with these. Um, I've taken the lid off. Um, this little bit is a bit tricky. I probably could get it off if I really wanted to, but little bits of plastic like that, they will get sorted out eventually. But like I said, when you can assist the system, um, by removing things, then that's ideal. Um, any, and I've already talked about the coffee cup not being recyclable, um, and that's because it's got a, quite a thick layer of plastic within it. Um, I can't rip this because it's got so much plastic in it. Um, so these ones, unfortunately, have to go to landfill, unless you're going to avoid it and not use it in the first place. Some of them are, but the thing is, and we we're talking about this earlier with our garden waste bins or um, current lack thereof. Um, if you've got a compostable coffee cup, it's great. It will break down. Um, but when you're out and about, most of the bins will be general waste bins. They will go to landfill. So they end up in landfill anyway. They take ages to break down. Um, and yeah, so, and most compostable products are made to break down or to be composted in commercial composting systems where they get very hot. Does anyone here have a compost bin at home or at your group? It'd be interesting to see if you do have compostable packaging, if you tear it up or cut it up into small pieces, put it in your compost bin, see how long it takes to actually break down. Um, because our home compost bins don't get as hot um, as often required to break things down. Yes, correct. So I would, I this one with the printing I might not, but stuff like this I'd definitely um, tear up and I, I do put that in my worm farm as well and they'll get through it. Oh. Ah, good one. Always pizza boxes. Yes. So pizza boxes, the thing is with the grease and the cheese or whatever toppings go missing. Um, so we don't want, like we don't want your chunky milk. We also don't want your cheese and other things. So say, for example, you had a pizza box. I don't really have anything as an example. I'm a really visual person. I like to see things. Um, you've got a pizza box. The bottom is greasy and cheesy, but the top is perfectly fine. Rip that top bit off and pop it in your recycle bin. And then that greasy bit could go in your general waste. So this is Yep. 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 We don't want it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's easy to buy bulk if you're buying laundry detergent and stuff like that because yeah. it won't deteriorate. Yeah. Um, and I uh, any clean product like that. I'd like to pressure put on the big stores from the Woolworths, the Bunnings, and so on to have those as uh, big uh, containers that you mm -hmm. can big mm. dispensing so stations. You can refill. Yeah. So they yeah. don't have to worry that uh, people will say, "Oh, I got food poisoning from you." But when it comes to um, uh, things like foods, um, is there going to be some way that uh, the big uh, sh shopping centres can mm -hmm. can get uh, food dispensing for the public and you take responsibility yeah. for your first container? Yeah. It might be if you drink bottled water. I've seen one over at Tawong, for example. You can mm -hmm. take your own container and, and get it. It's, it makes it much easier for the public yeah. if if the big shops <clears throat> already cater for that. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> um, 
I mean, we can, the way that I think people power works well when we, we spend with our dollar. So if you go to a place that does, like the source bulk foods or biome, for example, where you can um, use your own packaging, I like to think if you can afford to spend a little bit extra for that, like you're kind of showing that's where I want, that's where, that's what I support, I'm spending my money on it. With the big stores, I would say right into them, let them know, hey, I'd really love to see, my local store is here, I'd love to see this. Um, and if you, I think people, Businesses, they want your money. They want to, they want you to stay their customer. Um, so I think if you let shops, businesses, your local, wherever, know what you want, get all your friends to let them know what you want, um, then they might look into it. Or, put, yeah, um, unless there's a demand for it, why would you change? So if you can make that demand, I think that would be, it may work. And obviously that have so many layers, levels to work through to get things like that happening. Um, but yeah, did anyone else want to comment on that, like refillable stuff at stores and foods that you might add to the conversation? For the, going to the recycler organic shop, you know, to buy the um, to buy my washing detergent. Yeah, because that was the easiest spot in my lifestyle to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just step by step. Yeah, I wasn't too hard on myself of all doing it, but and it's a bit more expensive, like the organic yeah the food shop. But I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree, and that's. And the thing is, we'll get to the single-use plastic thing in a bit. Um, I realise I've got 30 minutes to go. I can talk all day, sorry. Um, but, yeah, so phasing things out slowly. Like, if you can see in your kitchen bin, for example, you've got heaps of something packets. Like, oh, I wonder if I can just get that little product out of my life by using something else. If it's um, bathroom products, moisturiser bottles, things, see if you can find something else and do it slowly. Like, there's no... It's so hard to avoid everything, um, but like you said, just bit by bit. I've been slowly bit by bit. My bathroom's been my focus lately. I don't use shampoo bottles anymore because I use shampoo bars and soap. Just don't buy like the plastic pump body wash. I just buy bars of soap, like little things like that, just to avoid the plastic. So hard, it's everywhere. Um, any? Uh, the, the large yeah. Yeah. Yes, that is true. Um, exactly. Yeah. So where we can create the demand, I think that will push, especially in your local area. I think focus local, like the big global problems, is like very confronting, very overwhelming. But focus local. See where you can make a difference. Um, yeah, see if you can influence a couple of businesses around you, your favourite coffee shop, for example. Um, but yeah. Alrighty, the next one, next product is glass. Um, the rules for glass is bottles and jars only. Again, lids off. Um, this one has a little aluminium ring around the edge. I don't want to break my fingers by trying to get that off, so I'll leave that on. Labels are fine. They'll all get blown off when they're melted. Um, any colours of things are fine. We don't put in um, tempered glass. So if it's not a bottle or a jar, if it's plate glass, an oven dish, anything, wine glass, um, can't go in our recycling bins um, because they're made out of a different type of glass. They don't melt at the same temperature. Um, so we don't want that mixing with our other glass that can be recycled. Um, I'll keep this lid off. I'll just chuck it over here with the steel and talk about that when I get to it. Um, any glass questions? That's usually an easy one. Um, I did see, so 10 cents, Container refund scheme. I did see that South Australia has recently announced that their wine bottles and spirit bottles will also be accepted for 10 cent um, refunds. And they were ahead of the game. So if they're doing it, it may, other states who introduced that container refund scheme later may also follow suit. Um, but for now, it's just our cans and bottles uh, and some juice cartons as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good one. Um, I think so. Cups um, are included in the single use bands, but reusable cups are not. So it may be worth investing in some reusable items that are washed. Also, sneaky, remember with the plastic bag ban? reusable bags that had to be a certain micron like a thickness to be classed as reusable 
There's now some plates around and cups that are reusable because they're a little bit of thicker plastic, but people will still use them as disposable. So that's kind of like gray area. But I would say try to source some um, reusable things that you can just wash and reuse. And yes, there's a, the time and effort and water for that. Um, but yeah, otherwise compostable. So coffee cups will be allowed if they're certified compostable. So if you can have get some certified compostable cups that you can use as wine cups, like smaller ones, well, whatever size ones you want, um, but suitable for what you need it for. So yeah, compostable or reusable. I would always say reusable. Um, even if it's plastic and you just reuse it again, 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 again. So yeah, then we're not disposing of things all the time. Um, glass ones, anything else to do with glass? The next one is aluminium. So what can be recycled in our wheelie bins is spray cans, cans and foil. Cans, uh, everything as long as it's empty. Gas, like spray cans especially, we don't want any um, pressurized gas exploding, um, which does happen. Um, so yeah, empty. With the foil, we need it to be scrunched into a ball because we don't want it to float around the machines and act like paper. We want it to bounce. So there goes that one. Um, so we need to scrunch alfoil or trays into a ball, um, bigger than a golf ball, closer to a tennis ball, just for that same reason of things dropping through the cracks and ending up on the floor. Um, it's a really good excuse at Easter time, so you have to eat enough Easter eggs so that your wrappers combined are big enough. It's just doing the right thing for the environment. So love that reason at Easter time. Um, this little aluminium lid, I took it off the glass bottle. That could also get scrunched up into something aluminium and put through together. Any aluminium questions? Yeah. Yes, as long as they're empty. Yeah. Um, but no, oh, what was the first thing you said? Yeah, like stuff in, in your garage, you know? Like yeah, chemicals. That sort of thing. Yeah, chemicals are a little bit um, borderline. Yeah, and paint cans. Um, yeah. Yeah, so at the waste management facilities, um, we've got the resource recovery area with all the drop off points for paint cans, chemical cans, car batteries, everything, a lot of things under the sun. Um, yeah, sure. Um, in neither bin, preferably, definitely not recycled. Yeah, neither. Yeah, so there's Aldi is a collection point for batteries. Um, office works, battery world, battery world actually surprise, um, what did I say surprises? Um, didn't mean to say that. They um, offer, I don't know what word, um, they offer little supply. They supply little bins, um, bigger, uh, purple ones that you can use as a storage. But if you are collecting batteries, just make sure that they're out of, out of reach of little people with wandering hands um, or in a, yeah, both in a container open by young people who like to eat everything. Um, so yes, batteries, Aldi, Officeworks, uh, Battery World. If you want a big collection point, feel free. Just make sure you're storing them in somewhere safe. Because yeah. Aldi don't accept like things. Big things, yeah. Like, I think they're similar to Aldi. Yeah, oh, okay. You know, like, um, mobile phone yeah. Officeworks takes mobile phone batteries so and no stuff as well. Phone. Yeah, yeah, Officeworks. We're actually doing a partnership with Officeworks for National Recycling Week, which is the 8th to the 14th of November, where we'll be doing um, one online and two in-person recycling presentations, and Officeworks is going to be there with all their collection bins for their hard-to-recycle items. Um, they're always available at their stores, um, but yeah, we're going to bring them to our presentations for the community to access as well. Um, I'm going to hopefully have time to go through the hard to recycle items and drop off points. No, that's okay. I'm getting, that's okay. I'm getting distracted as well. Ooh, oh, where am I going this way? Um, and just the last one with the steel. So cans and spray cans is the rule. I would take this lid off because it's clearly not steel. I'd also take that off. This one here is borderline. It's like that yogurt tub. I'd put it in. I think, um, but this little nozzle, I definitely would not. That one would go general waste. Um, but if you think of a yogurt tub size, that one I would maybe put in. Um, but if you've got something that you're unsure about, use a judgment. Um, 
if you are unsure, landfill it. If you like, yeah. Um, the steel lid that I took off the glass jar, I would put it in this steel can. I've got other little lids in here too. Squeeze it shut so it stays in there. Careful of your hands. Um, and when that's all stuck in there, it can go in together. So that helps the small things make it through the system. Um, if you're unsure if things are steel or not, you could use a little magnet. If it sticks, it's steel. Um, then steel things can go steel. If it doesn't stick and it's aluminium, you can either wrap it up into an aluminium tray or foil. Any questions on those rules? We're going to go through some other stuff. Okay. So landfill at the bottom of our waste hierarchy is disposing um, last last resort when we can't do anything else. Um, we've already talked about our coloured bins. Uh, this is what I was talking about earlier with the composition of our bins. So uh, we, another part of my job is a very glamorous auditing where we get samples of bins either directly from the bins or intercept a truck. We get a big scoop of it, put it on the ground. We sort it into all these different categories to work out what's going into the bins. Um, from our general waste one, we did an audit in 2019. From our general waste one, we've got 60% of our stuff from the samples um, is compostable. So that's organic stuff, food and garden waste. So if slash when we get garden waste bins, we'll be able to be rescuing around 30% of our waste, um, which then would be used and turned into a resource. If we get BOGO bins, so that's food, organic, garden, organic bins, um, which other council areas are transitioning towards, um, and Morton is investigating that as well, we'll then hopefully be able to rescue 60% of the stuff out of our general waste. So 60% less volume would be going to landfill, which is great because we don't want to fill up our landfills too quickly. We don't want to fill them up eventually, um, unfortunately, and we'll have to build a new one. But if we can slow that rate, that's, that's our goal. 14% is what we call resource loss because recyclables are resources and if we lose them, we're losing those resources. Um, that happens when people don't know that things um, can be recycled and they're putting it in general waste or they don't care or their recycling bin fills up and they just put it here because they don't care. Um, so yeah, and then we've got 26% like true general waste. So if we're recycling perfectly, if we're processing our organics perfectly, then our general waste would be at 25% volume. I also said before off camera, uh, for those online and who came a little bit later, um, you can decrease the size of your general waste bin, which saves the cost of servicing charges. So um, our standard sizes are 240 litres. You can reduce that to 140 litres. Um, you can jump on council's website or give customer service a call. They'll be able to help you through it. Um, yeah, so if you're not filling your bin every week, you're paying for that empty space. So if you wanted to reduce uh, the size of your bin, you can do that very easily. We're going to, did you have a hand up? I was going to say about the weight 26%, but is there like a go through that? Yeah, so we go through that and we break it down into categories of like disposable paper, nappies, um, organic things, like, yeah. So we break that down. So then that informs the education that we deliver. So we need the information. We need to know what's happening uh, within the community, how people are using the bins. So then we can try to influence behavior change for the better. So recycle this stuff. Hey guys, this stuff is recyclable. We can be rescuing this. Um, yeah. Um, so council's curbside collection, this is representing the smaller general waste bin, um, the 240, or you can also upsize your recycling bin. So if you're filling your recycling bin in a fortnight and you want more volume, you can upsize it to a 360 litre bin. Um, that might save some, like avoid resource loss. So if your recycle bin fills up and then you're putting it in your general waste, um, you may be able to increase your recycle wheelie bin size or get a bulk bin. Um, so bulk bins, again, if you're filling them up, before they're serviced, you can either increase the frequency of them being serviced or get a second bin. So sometimes space is the issue. So if you're filling up your bulk bin um, and you've got no other space for a second one, see if you can just increase the servicing. So instead of getting emptied once a week, you might get it twice or three times in a fortnight. Yep. How do you go about getting those bulk bins? So there's a number of different contractors that supply it. Um, council doesn't directly, um, but so there's like clean away, uh, Ramondas, JJ Richards, um, a few others. So just have a Google. Uh, because we don't work directly with them, we don't endorse any of them. It's up to you to work out what's, what's going to work best for you. So you, you they would collect that? Yes. 
Yeah, correct. Yeah. Lyndon, do you have anything about that that you wanted to add about the bulk bins? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I threw you on the spot there, but I'm just because we were talking about it earlier. So you could call customer service and they'd probably put you onto someone from waste services, um, which would say because it's not our jurisdiction, it's for you guys to do your research. Um, we might be able to offer advice without being biased on what might work or what works with other clubs. Um, but yeah. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you mean like, um, I don't have any. Okay. Um, if it can tear like paper, I would say it's, it could go into your compost bin. But again, do an experiment. See if it's in there, how long it takes to break down. Um, if it's there for months, then no, take it out. Um, if it breaks down really quickly, then yep, keep it in. Kind of same with tea bags, just so you know, for composting. Some tea bags can be composted, some can't. Kind of just need to experiment to find out which ones work. Yes. Um, yes. Yep. So you can have a yellow one for commingled recycling. So we call this commingled when it's all together, our five material types. Or you can have a blue one. Blue represents cardboard. So if your society is disposing of a lot of cardboard, um, Vizzy as well. So Vizzy is the company that runs the MRF. So they also have the collection bins just for the cardboard because they process that and send it straight to their paper mill next door and then turn that into paper products. Um, so yes, you can get a commingled bulk bin or a, just a paper cardboard or just a cardboard one. So yeah, do some investigating. Um, the cost of recycling bulk bins is much cheaper than the cost of general waste bulk bins. Again, that's an incentive to recycle more and dispose of less to landfill. Um, I'll just do this quickly. Um, we talked about organics in landfill earlier. So when organics end up in landfill, they break down anaerobically or without oxygen because everything's being compacted, um, which releases methane, which is a greenhouse gas contributing to climate change, which we clearly don't want any more of. Um, and they also release leachate, which is a very contaminated liquid, which drips down to the bottom of the landfill. We actually collect that, transport it out by pipes, treat it, and then reuse it. So we use it on the landfill site uh, for dust management, um, erosion sediment control, and vegetation management as well. We also capture um, and convert the methane into energy as well here in Morton, which is exciting. So this is kind of the, the reason why recycling is cheaper to, or more cost effective to um, get serviced is because of, partly because of the waste disposal levy, which was introduced in 2019. So we put a, the state government put a levy on disposing of general waste to incentivize recycling. So we put the cost up for this, which makes recycling or recovering items more cost effective. So the levy aims to reduce the amount of waste we go to, that gets sent to landfill, um, encourage waste avoidance, so the top of the hierarchy, we want to avoid making waste in the first place, um, it provides a f source of funding to enable better resource recovery practices, and it also supports pro uh, programs like this to then educate the community um, on how we can recycle, how we can avoid waste in the first place. Um, there's some information on council's website about the waste levy. The state government would have information on their website as well because it's their levy. Um, any questions on that? I realise I'm going to fly through a little bit, um, but stop me for questions if you need. Oh, question. Is that? I'm sure I've got more. I do. That was a pause. Um, this is the oh, this is a waste transfer station, um, which is like the middle point in between our recycling bins getting collected and them ending up in the materials recovery facility. Um, we've already talked about our bins. So at the materials recovery facility, we've got things like a conveyor belt, everything moves through the conveyor belt, all the paper is removed, all the plastics removed. At the end of the line, after all of our materials have been removed, all that would be left, left hopefully, is stuff that shouldn't be here. So this, well, the, the plastic actually 
kind of gets sorted with the paper because it's light and float, so that's why we don't want that in there. Um, but other things that would be left on the conveyor belt is stuff that just goes to landfill. So we sometimes re refer to stuff as wish cycling. Put something in a recycling bin and wish that it's going to get recycled. Um, it doesn't happen like that. Like things get picked out and it's not recycled. So that's where I was hesitating with this one. Um, I might be wish cycling by putting that in there. Um, maybe I don't put it in. Um, but coffee cups, for example, when we put that in a recycle bin, it's not going to get recycled. Mm. Yeah, that's not recyclable um, for a number of reasons. It would be a composite plastic, so it's got lots of different plastic types all together. There might be little screws and hinges and batteries and everything in there. Um, so with the plastics, the thing we need to remember is bottles or containers. So the MRF is designed to process household waste. Bottles and containers are our big plastic items, um, so it's designed for that. There may be other commercial um, places where you can take big things like that, um, but we would definitely recommend to, if things are still in working order, to take them to either one of council's treasure markets at the waste management facilities, uh, op shops, marketplace, try to keep them moving instead of throwing them in the bin. Um, we've already done that. So this is an important one, what can't go in our recycling bin. So we did a recycling audit back in April and June this year, um, and we worked out the, the contamination rate in our bins in Morden is around 17%. So 17% of stuff ending up in our recycling bins doesn't get recycled. It gets taken out at the MRF and goes to landfill. Common items were plastic bags um, or wrap and polystyrene. Um, polystyrene can be recovered elsewhere. There are I think there's some a business in the region that does um, process polystyrene, but not in our recycling bins. Um, no food scraps, rubbish, or vegetation. Hazardous materials like chemicals, paint, batteries, um, and please don't trap your recycling. So if we've got all this beautiful recycling in a plastic bag, that whole plastic bag is going to move through the conveyor belt. So unfortunately, some people might be the best recyclers, but they trap it, so then it all ends up in landfill anyway. So keep your recycling loose few stops of questions, but we've been doing the questions throughout. Okay, other ways to recycle. So mobile phones, you can take back to Officeworks. So this is the Officeworks wall. Um, it's got different things. So pens and markers, ink and toner cartridges, mobile phones and accessories, um, data storage, so like USBs and disk drives, batteries and computers and accessories. So Officeworks has a great range of different things. So you literally just pop them in their little thing, in their little pigeonhole. Um, they do, yep. Yes, you can. Um, yeah, and like I said, we're going to be doing some workshops with them in November. Actually, they're both on the 13th of November. One's at Osprey House and one's at Bribery Island Seaside Museum. If anyone, we can, it's not live on Council's website yet, but it will be, um, to register to attend. Um, these are TerraCycle boxes. So TerraCycle is a program that collects hard to recycle items such as disposable face masks, batteries, bread tags, um, blister packs for medications, um, different things. I saw a biome store in the city with their TerraCycle boxes that they fill up and they post that back to TerraCycle and it gets processed. So they've got those TerraCycle boxes. Anyone can get those TerraCycle boxes. Um, no, so like this stuff? This is Tetra Pak. They can go in your recycle bin fine. Yeah, TerraCycle. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit, yeah, but we can now. Um, so, yeah, your TerraCycle boxes, I can't see what they, they would just say, choose your waste stream. Um, Planet Arc has these boxes for cartridges. So, printing cartridges, you can have one of these boxes to collect and take back to them. Um, they recycle, recover those printing cartridges. Um, so, Aldi partners with Planet Arc to collect batteries. This is the red cycle bin, which is at almost every Coles and Woolworths in the country. Um, so I try to avoid plastics as best I can, but when I can't, I keep them in a little bag like this under my kitchen sink. When it's full, I take that. Let's be honest, I'll probably leave that in my car for a little bit until I remember to take it in, but it's all clean so it doesn't go smelly. Um, and then you just pop it in the bin at Coles and Woolies. So that's a really cool way that we can rescue our soft plastics. It's amazing once we start keeping that out of our kitchen bin, how slowly the kitchen bin fills up. For me, especially when I started doing it, like I ripped things out, um, the volume of it went down. You have to empty the bin is um, way less. 
and you get to rescue all of these things. They're turned into, um, there's a number of different organizations. Um, some are turned into playground equipment, park benches, park seats, um, car park safety bollards and different things. So it's nice to see that being rescued. Um, and of course, containers for change. Yeah, sure. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Potentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got three in the region. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I would say contact, try to either get to your um, local store manager or jump online um, and say you've got this idea. I'm not sure if they do collection points in other places. I know TerraCycle might be an option, but that needs someone to drive it. So someone to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I could have a chat to them um, on the 13th of November when we've got our National Recycling Week presentations. Um, if I, I could get your contact details later and let you know how that conversation goes. Cool. Um, yeah, so for cash for containers, if, are we all collecting cash for containers for our clubs or societies? Um, if you're not, it's a really easy way um, to make money, fundraising opportunity. Um, this is talking about council waste management facilities. We've kind of talked about different things, mulching green waste and metal recycling. Um, but like I said, at the our waste management facilities, if you've got your load sorted right, and there's some resources online about the order in which you can sort to make it easy when you get there, like your general waste stuff would be the first thing you put in your trailer or car because you're going to offload everything else first and then what's left goes general waste. So if you're wanting to take things to... Um, a resource recovery area. Just think about that and how you load your car to make it easy when you get there. Um, we also have our treasure markets where we've got donated some, someone's trash is another person's treasure. So it's like a, a version of a, an op shop, a secondhand store where items are donated, um, where people would come to a waste management facility. Instead of taking it straight to the landfill area, they offload it and then it ends up in treasure markets where it can be sold Circular economy, again, it stays in the system moving around instead of going to landfill, which is fantastic. Um, these are old photos. Dacobin has had a beautiful facelift to their resource recovery area. I took photos, but it was awful lighting, so I need to go back and take better photos. Um, but the concept is all the different drop-off points of different things. Um, so we've got batteries and barrel drums and white goods and tyres and other stuff. So council facilities has that um, opportunity that um, facility there for people to take items to. Um, something I wanted to mention for your clubs would be to try to, like thinking of the waste hierarchy, avoiding waste in everything you do. So if it comes to like uniforms, for example, trying to buy products that are made out of a natural fiber. So just thinking of all those little microplastics that go down the drain when we wash things. Like everything, almost everything has plastic. It's really hard to avoid. So what we can do, like you were saying about using um, paper to wrap up food, we could maybe use for like beeswax wraps. Of course, it depends on your setting and your context. Um, but reusing, um, using reusable or compostable serving ware, um, drink containers, um, sending back packaging to suppliers where possible. If you are getting things in, contact your supplier, say, hey, like, do you want this? When we're done with it, they may be able to reuse it again. Um, or send it back to you full, like just keep it going back and forth. Styrofoam boxes, for example, might be one that your supplier might take back and refill. Um, with your waste management on site, if you, so all of these sign, this signage, that's state government signage, that's what we use in schools, early learning centres, everywhere because we keep the messaging consistent. So these colours are standardised across Australia. Yellow is always for recycling. Red's always for general waste. Blue is always for paper slash or and or cardboard. Um, and that light green is for organic. So like if we ever get a garden waste bin, it would be that light green color complying with the standard colors. Um, 
So something that you could do is a very simple thing is installing signage on your infrastructure to make it clear for people. If your bins are not already red or yellow, um, you had some stickers at the front, didn't you? There's some stickers at the front um, to sign them. You can also access all this stuff online for free digitally, and then you can either print or laminate it. Or um, if you want stickers, Council does have stickers, big ones. Um, you can get my details and we can try to get some to you, um, like big A3 ones for your big wheelies to make it really easy. The easiest thing that we can do and we recommend for everyone is having your bins coloured and paired. So if you do have recycling bins, have them near a general waste bin to give people the option. When you're walking to a bin with this, there's only a general waste bin, you're probably going to put it there. If there's a recycling bin 100 metres that way, you don't know about it or you can't be bothered, you probably just put it here anyway. So if you have a recycling bin, try to pair them. Don't have to be exactly side by side, but at least within like a reasonable distance that you can see both and make that decision. Because most of the time people want to do the right thing. So putting them next to each other and clearly signed, which is which, is the best thing that we can do to give people that opportunity. Um, so that's right, clear bin signage. If you want to take in um, regular events, like clean up, for, uh, clean up Australia Day is in March. Um, if you want to get your society or group involved, you can make it fun, a competition, what you can send out to different areas, who can get the most or who can have the most people involved. Um, to make it fun, make it exciting, make it an event. Uh, we're heavily involved in Clean Up Australia Day and other events around during the year. So, oh yeah, so Sunday 6th of March is next year's event. If you do want to register, they send you basically everything. Like they organise the advertising, the kit, like the gloves. They get it to you so you can, obviously they need someone to drive it, but they are so helpful with their community groups because they want to involve as many people as possible. Um, one minute, let's go. So with the plastics bag, oh, not plastic, but single use plastic ban um, that came in on the 1st of September, it, um, I'll actually jump through this one. So these are all the items that are currently banned. It's looking like it will be expanded to include other items. So plastic cups are currently not included, so stuff like this, um, but they're looking to expand that. Uh, also coffee cups are currently not on that list, um, but soon, am I right? Yeah, um, but soon coffee cups like this will have to be um, comply to compostable standards. So there's two Australian standards that the coffee cups will have to comply to. Um, so at the moment, if you've got these, you can still supply them, um, but watch this space because this is going to change. It's kind of like just a staged approach of introducing the ban. If you've got excess stock of anything, there's a program called the Great Plastics Rescue, um, which is facilitated through the National Retail Associ Association, um, where they will collect plastics, any of these plastics, um, and recycle them. None of that, maybe the plastic bowl could be considered a container, but none of that can be recycled in our wheelie bins. So programs like the Great Plastic Rescue can recover them. You can jump onto their website, The Great Plastic Rescue, register your business or club, and they'll get in touch when they're doing like a collection sort of drive. Um, yep. Yeah. Any questions on the plastic span? So much paper. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. As long as they're clean. Yeah. I made a tough call the other day. We had Indian, it was really oily. I was like, general waste. Um, Unless I was going to wash that in hot water, like we don't want the oil and greasiness. That's just contamination. So you can put it in the dishwasher. Yeah, that's true. I don't use the dishwasher, but you could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, with that, with the plastic containers, takeaway containers, I'll just add, I don't really have anything as a perfect example, um, but those lids are made out of the same type of plastic. So that would be something that you can leave the lid on because um, they will squish. The air is going to come out of it when it squishes. Um, so those ones, if they are lids on, also, it's not this one. I did see a, it was similar to this little plastic container. It did say with that ARL, the Australasian Recycling Label, it said lid on. I was like, mm, most interesting. Um, so some things when they know that it's the same type of plastic um, can stay on. So the takeaway containers, for example. And you can put stuff in that. Oh, no, that one's a no. Some council areas do promote that. I know down in Sydney, I've seen council areas um, promote that where they put lids and stuff inside plastic bottles. Is that what you mean? Yeah, 
Yeah, like the plate breaking Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do want so things that are flat, so plastic, say flat lids like this, they're gonna kind of act like paper and go that way. Um, so that's why we need these to be like a 3D shape. So they bounce and don't float. So because of the machinery sorting it out, like the papers, I'm putting it that way, the paper is sorted out with like big fans and stuff to blow the light stuff. So the flat things kind of get lost and if they're small, they drop through. So, um, but takeaway container lid can stay on, but the container needs to be empty. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Um, there's more resources on council's website. Like I said earlier, we do waste education with early learning centers, schools, community groups on a range of different topics, um, composting, worm farming, uh, recycling, litter reduction, different things. If you want to get involved, you can come up to me after Tim's talk and we can have a chat or in the little break. And yes, single use items, are, um, Queensland Government has their website. They've also, I wanted to just quickly add this one. So Plastic Free July is a campaign that's run in July to try to phase out single use plastics. Um, this year I really focused on my bathroom, um, but they've got, do I have it here? Nope. Um, they've got different categories. So at the bottom of their website, there's a link that says like, or a little button that says what you can do. And they've got a nice little thing. So at events you can click and it has like your common items, single use plastic items and alternatives. So it's really cool. So you might say, say local businesses for business community. They've got really good resources on here. Accessible every month of the year. July is when they really drive their campaign. But if you wanted to access this, it's on the Plastic Free July website. And I find it super helpful just to get ideas. You might not have thought of this. Um, they've thought of heaps. So they work, they feature different businesses and case studies every year. So it might be worth jumping on and having a look at their resources as well. Hurrah. Any last questions before? Yeah? Um, just a oh, sorry, just a question from online. So, yeah. is it better if for an item to put in the recycling or the waste if you're not sure about it? Yeah, if you're not sure about it, I wouldn't put it in. Um, if you can like jump on council's website, um, I was going to say Google it, but council's website because processing systems are different. So we have our information on our website, which is based on our facility. Um, but I did say this maybe off camera earlier as well. Council does have um, a feature on our website where you can search for particular items and it will tell you whether you can put it in one of our bins or if you can recover it somewhere else. So gas cylinders, for example, it will say not acceptable in either bins, but you can take it to our resource recovery areas at our waste management facilities. Um, so if you're unsure, yeah, I was doing this with this little bugger. Um, if you're unsure, look, you'd probably leave it out. Um, yeah, otherwise it's just contamination. It slows down the system. Yeah. No, sure. Uh, are they, that they are. That's not a stupid question. Our wheelie bins are actually made out of recycled plastic number two, which are milk bottles. So milk bottles, I mean, number two is a very common plastic type. It's recycled quite a lot, which is great. Um, but yes, our wheelie bins are made out of plastic number twos. So the bin you've got may have been a milk bottle one day. That was a good question. Thanks. <laughs> Alrighty. Anything else? I'll be sticking around. So if you do think of anything, um, I'm really looking forward to Tim's presentation and I'll be yeah around. So if there's any other questions online or here, we can have a chat later. Cool. We'll just have a quick break. Thank you.